Uh, some of you may be aware that a, a, a streamer many of us are familiar with, who is probably actually also streaming right now, um, uh, it, it recently made a thread uh, talking about um, male loneliness. And uh, a, a streamer that we all know very well by the name of Vosh recently did a thread about, uh, about male loneliness and the rise in alienation. And it spawned quite a lot of discourse, um, like, like a lot of discourse. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through this discourse. Now, I didn't weigh in on this discourse at all because I follow a thing called the imps code. And I do a pretty good job with it. And when I say I follow the imps code, the imps code, it's like a... Uh, it's like a, a user manual, basically, on how to engage healthier on social media. And I'm going to teach it to you here in just a second because it's been a very long time uh, since I taught people about the imps code, but it is very, very clearly uh, relevant. Now, the reason why I had to bring up the imps code today is because of this thread, like I mentioned, that was done by Vosh V. Vosh. Vosh. You guys know this guy. We all know this guy in this space. He's a pretty popular streamer in this space. And I happen to think his opinions are pretty interesting most of the time. I, uh, uh, I know a lot of some people don't like Vosh. I like Vosh. I think, I think his stuff has some interesting uh, uh, things to say. I think he's got a lot of insights. And I think this thread is certainly interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to read through this thread. Um, and we're going to talk about some of the discourse that... Uh, that resulted from this. And the reason that we're going to do that on stream instead of on Twitter is because on stream, you can have a coherent and self-contained conversation about the topics at hand. It's not uh, subject to random quote retweets. It's, of course, it can be clipped, but it's a little bit easier to establish context. When we talk about discourse on stream or in a chat or whatever, we actually make it something that's productive instead of a waste of everyone's time. So, let's look at this thread, and without any further ado, let's read it. Okay, I'm going to zoom this up so you all can see this. So, the, uh, the original post is this. Alexandra M. Hunt says, Young men aren't having sex. Nearly a third of men under 30 have not had sex, and a higher percent do not have as much sex as they would like. That's not exactly surprising, but this kind of statistic is a sign of a much deeper problem. Or of much deeper problems, sorry. Now, before we even jump into the full thread, um, keep in mind, statistics are funny, squirrely little things. They can often tell you something but what they are telling you is not always 100% accurate. So for example, this, uh, this post does not tell you if people are having more gay sex. If you notice, uh, if you actually go and look into the details of it, um, not only, well actually, there's actually literally context added onto here. The legend on this chart says that it shows the share of people who have reported no sex in the last year not those who are virgins. This tweet's claim is not made in the original article. So first of all, this site, this claim is not actually what the, what the original article is claiming. They just took the picture and made their own claim on top of it. Um, but secondly, if you actually go and read the original article, you will discover that this actually is talking about people who have had sex with women, men who have had sex with women. So it actually, even though they, were, they weren't selecting for only straight men, they were just asking men as a general category whether they were having sex with women. What this means is that people who don't have sex with women but might be having gay sex would show up as virgins or people who didn't have sex in the last year, even though they were having sex because they're gay. So that's, that's something to keep in mind before we even jump into this. Like always, whenever you see a quippy chart or a quippy statistic online, always take a minute and look a little bit deeper because most of the time it's saying something different than you think it is. Or it could be. There's a good chance that that's the case. I just wanted to make sure that before we got any further into this, that we, we just talk about the statistics itself. All right, now we return to the tweets. 
Vosh says, this is a serious sociological problem, and the response I've seen from many leftists has been disheartening. I would like to talk about why. Thread. First of all, nothing that I'm about to say suggests an entitlement to sex or to women's bodies. All right, that's a good start. Obviously, nobody should ever feel pressured to have sex with a man just because men as a group are more socially isolated. Everyone should be free to choose their partners, and that also means to deny any partners. People should be free to not have any partners. If somebody just wants to be by themselves, that should be okay. That should be socially okay for someone to not have partners. It's okay. That said, prolonged virginity can point to an increased social alienation, an increase which has been observed in both men and women through multiple trends, average number of friends being a big one. Men seem to be experiencing more alienation, though. This can be attributed to many things, primarily gendered socialization. Women often have an easier time forming friend groups, and men are taught to be more emotionally distant and individualistic. This can manifest in a lot of really negative ways for men's mental health. Speaking as a man who's had all sorts of friends, it's not hard to see a pattern of men, especially cisgender heterosexual men, being more closed off and less willing to express enthusiasm when hanging out or making new friends. This right here, what, what Vosh is getting at here, is not like a new observation. Um, and, and, and I'm not saying that that's a bad, that, that that's a point against him. That's a point towards what, what he is saying here. Uh, it has been, you know, like, like various, various, uh, researchers, even, even hell, like I would even go so far as to say like the, the, the public, uh, the, the, the public, uh, perception of gendered interactions is very obviously slanted towards men being closed off. We see this in our media. We see this represented in, uh, in, in, in everything from music to TV to movies. We see this represented, uh, in, in, in stories that are told about our society. We see this represented even in schools where, you know, counselors have had to, have had to address the fact that a lot of like, you know, uh, that boys are taught that they can't cry and things like that. So there we go. Just wanted to, to address that real quick. I mean, it's practically a stereotype for dude bro friends to be so reserved with their feelings that they have to mask genuine emotional movements or sincere affection or appreciation towards other men behind a veil of irony because it would be weird and gay to be sincere. That's almost exactly what I was talking about there. The idea that like you'll get called gay if you cry, if you feel emotions, if you think something, if you get excited about something that you like, oh wow, you're being autistic, that sort of thing. There's a lot of this, okay? There's a lot of this. And it, it doesn't just affect men, but it does. It is like, it's so common among male social spaces that it is practically a stereotype. If these behavior patterns are causing mass social alienation, making it harder for men to form relationships, that's a real sociological problem. It's a gendered problem, and progressives should take it seriously. But I see a cavalcade of so-called progressives who seem to assume the only possible, possible explanation for this trend is that men are shit and that women are tired of them, that it's men's fault and they need to correct this problem on their own. How is that a progressive response? Gendered socialization is just one aspect of this problem. There are many others, economic insecurity, making men feel like they can't provide for a partner, modern dating culture and dating apps being a few, uh, few others, and they're worth taking seriously. Is it not the responsibility of progressives to examine sociological problems and, and address them? Not to mention, if lonely men see us mocking them for their loneliness, who else will they turn to for answers and who will they end up blaming? Please take this stuff seriously, or at least don't use it as an excuse to mock men for being lonely. Not every lonely guy is intolerable and unkind to women. They could just be anxious, asocial, depressed, autistic, or poor and overworked. Come on. So, that's the whole thread. And this thread, as you can tell just by the responses here, this is like, how many, like, I mean, Jesus. 10,000 likes, 1,000 retweets. A lot of people were engaging with this tweet. This tweet really, really, really went wild, okay? Now, I happen to largely agree with what Vosh says here. And um, of course, as often happens with discourses online, a, a discourse starts as one thing and it very, very, very quickly evolves into something else. So, 
what this discourse started as was a discussion about the importance of taking male or, or men's loneliness and alienation seriously, something that I think is incredibly, incredibly important. And you all know this. Um, and what it has evolved into is a, a sort of contest between various corners of Twitter to to frame the, the the other side as either saying that women should fix society's problems or the other side saying that, oh, you guys are actually arguing, uh, you're arguing that we should have, you know, comfort women or we should have, you know, government mandated girlfriends. And obviously, uh, both of these arguments are remarkably stupid, but they're also not accurate as to what the vast majority of people are actually saying and engaging in. Um, but I wanted to talk about this because I, I think there's a couple of different things I can address and that I can, you know, hopefully give some food for thought on. So let's address the bad faith arguments first to get them out of the way. Let's dispel the bad faith ones. First, uh, is, is it women's responsibility to fix all of these problems? Um, obviously no. Uh, and also... I don't think you can take a sociological phenomenon and pin it on any individual or even a single group of people. Um, I've had a I've had a number of conversations about this topic in the past, and while I think that the the idea that women are supposed to fix this problem by doing X thing is remarkably remarkably common among the general populace. Uh, I, I do think that's an issue. Like, I think that a lot of like, especially right-leaning spaces do essentially think that they are entitled in some in some way to women's time, space, and effort. And, you know, you see this, I've talked about this, uh, uh, I, I've talked about this before in the past, like how um, in, in a lot of like, for like, for example, Twitch streamers, Twitch streamers will, uh, if a, if a woman comes out and says something like says, "Oh, uh, I experienced this," or uh, "I really hate that I get a bunch of sexualizing, uh, sexual harassment messages from my fans," I'm really mad about this, and then reacts and 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 you know responds to that sort of thing. A lot of times, those like women creators, femme creators, will get slapped really hard by even more harassment just for coming out against the harassment they've already received. As if, you know, them saying, oh, I hate it when this happens, I'm gonna block every fucking asshole who does this, is somehow like hurting other people. And, um, and, 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 and God, like that is a real thing, by the way. It's a, it is a real thing. There are a lot of people out in the world who basically think that women are are not doing things right, and they're the reason why uh, why social uh, why dating and socializing is painful. Um, there's a lot of people who believe that sort of thing out in the world. Now, I don't think there's a lot of people who believe that in progressive spaces. So, so while I do think that that exists, I, I don't think that most people in progressive or largely left spaces actually believe that. Okay, so I just wanted to address that one, and also. Uh, put out there the idea that yes, in the general population, a lot of women feel like no matter what they do, they are losing in this. Uh, 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 they are losing in this in this entire engagement. Okay. Um, and then let's talk about the 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 sort of other side, which is this uh, this side that is saying, um, you know, that people who are talk who are bringing attention to male loneliness are essentially advocating. Uh, for, uh, you know, uh, for, for like comfort women or whatever. I think that's also a bad faith interpretation of this. I don't, I, I think that it is important. Like the world has a lot of men in it. Men's issues are important, even in a world where men's issues tend to be given the front seat due to historical reasons or due to historical factors, reasons, whatever, due to historical factors. Um, I think it is important to still be aware of those issues. Now, of course, that change, that makes this whole thing a conversation of how do you go about talking about these issues? Not in progressive spaces? Okay. Um, in progressive spaces? Um, so there's, I knew there was going to be a lot of, um, there was going to be a lot of disagreement. And a lot of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this was so that I could field 
and uh, work through some of the disagreements, talk through some of the disagreements on stream as opposed to over <laughs> Twitter, okay? So, um, uh-oh, semantics time? No, it's not semantics time. I don't think so. I'm all for women's issues, trans issues, women of color, but men's issues should be included. Men's issues, okay, men's issues are included and they should be included. However, there, there is a tendency uh, like I said, this is not so much of a problem in progressive spaces, but in the general populace as a whole, there is a tendency of uh, of women's issues being sidelined in the name of how those issues affect men. So, uh, for example, uh, you'll notice that even in the midst, in the peak of the Me Too movement, at the, at the absolute, when the worst of the worst was coming out during the Me Too movement, a lot of people made that about uh, the entire question, all of the abuse that was going on, they made that entire conversation about how it might affect uh, some random hypothetical man who might be insulted. You know what I mean? Who might be, uh, or, or, or not insulted, um, m miss, uh, uh, what's the word I'm trying to look for? Uh, um, falsely accused, there's the word. I don't know why, why, this is this is this is my brain today. Uh, who might be falsely uh, 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 accused? Now, uh, 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 so so it does happen. Nuts, and 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 I, that's addressing you to the thing saying about the progressive space, and it does happen in progressive spaces as well. It definitely does, um, just not as much as in 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 sort of normie space. So. Uh, Let's talk about the, now that we've talked about those sort of like bad faith arguments off the cuff, let's talk about uh, some of the issues, like the, the actual issues itself. Let's talk about what's actually going on in this conversation. When we're talking about loneliness and when we're talking about men's issues, um, it is a simple truth that there are a lot of, there are a lot of lonely men out there in the world. Uh, loneliness seems to be, and this is from my own personal experience, just being an online, uh, you know, an online commentator engaging with and also talking with a lot of men that I know, um, like there's a lot of issues. Like it's a real problem. Like this, the, the idea of the, the, the problem of men's loneliness is an issue, even if it doesn't take the form of this, which we know now, of course, obviously, this chart was a little bit misleading. Obviously, a third of men is, it, the, the third of men under 30 have not had sex is not accurate. That's a misinterpretation of the data, but that doesn't mean the problem doesn't exist. You were having flashbacks to my talk with the, the Scrub King. The, the Scrub King conversation was exact, was, was a microcosm of this larger conversation. Um, for those of you who don't know, a couple of years ago, I had an argument with a content creator who basically, he was basically making the argument uh, uh, that women had a whole bunch of stuff that they needed to do, that they, if they cared about the problem, then individual women should basically take it upon themselves to act or behave or engage in a certain way. And I disagreed with that because I don't think that's how you can do that. I don't think it's reasonable to say, hey guys, men are socialized to be really awkward and terrible for women. Therefore, women should be more forgiving uh, when men cross boundaries with them. I don't think that's the right answer. I really do not think that's the right answer. Now that I don't think is, uh, obviously, we're not 100% talking about that, but it's impossible for us not to uh, to address this now that it's been brought up. The uh, the 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 idea that women need to change the way that they socialize that individual women basically are are being given a task that they if you want the world to get better you have to do this i think that's the wrong framing i think it's a bad framing because again it victim blames now this erupted into a long conversation which got really toxic and the result of that conversation, by the way, just so that we're clear, was an unbelievable wave of harassment at me. The, the guy who was going on there, did the guy who went up against me did not get harassed. I got harassed about that. I got my fucking videos bombed. I got somebody writing a, a literal manifesto about how I'm bad for women and I'm bad for the trans community. So... I have a little bit of experience of trying to engage positively and engage productively on this issue. 
and not actually and 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 getting the brunt of that conversation. So what I'm trying to say here is that this is a fucking messy issue and it's extremely easy because of the pre-existing because of the context that we live under because of the fact that we live under such a ge gender segregated society it's very difficult it's extremely difficult to even have this conversation without women ending up having to you know take the you know bear the brunt of this so You see where I'm where I'm coming from with how how this is an impossible conversation to have on Twitter. It's a hard conversation to even work through on stream. I talk about this this shit all the time. My takes are very fine tuned. I agree with you, nuts. I'm not saying that you're one of the people doing this, but there are a lot of people who do this. There and there's also a lot of um there's also a lot of hyperbole that's involved, and there's also a lot of like concealing of true intentions. There are uh, people who will pretend that they're making an argument uh, for people to think about men's loneliness, but they're really just actually trying to waste time. But that doesn't mean that you can just disengage with the topic as a whole. I still have yet to get into a relationship. I'll be taking notes. Listen, relationships are complicated. It doesn't matter who you are. Relationships are complicated. And relationships are especially complicated in our a uh, current social milieu, okay? So real quick, let's just talk about, let's for a second, let's talk about the men's side of things, okay? And obviously, again, much like the conversation that we had on, uh, on uh, uh, what was it, on, on uh, gender ascensionism and, and all this shit, we're going to have to, for a second here, just set aside uh, we're gonna have to be erasure of the non-binaries, okay? All of all of us non-binaries, we'll just let's just we're gonna we're gonna take a seat for just a second, okay? We're gonna pretend that that it's just men and women, okay? Just for the simplification of this particular topic, okay? Let's talk about men. Men in our society are saddled with a whole bunch of expectations that they are given to from their parents, from even from every single corner of society, and. By the way, there are women who contribute to this problem. The idea of, of patriarchy, the idea of toxic masculinity is not only upheld by men, but men are just the main characters in the world of the patriarchy against w whether anybody wants it to be that case or not. That is just how it is. And the reason, like, like, if you don't agree with the existence of patriarchy, if you don't agree with the existence of toxic masculinity, we're ha we're going to end up having a different conversation. Right now, I'm not arguing over the validity of the concept of patriarchy or the concept of toxic masculinity. These are being assumed as a given in this conversation. But those things don't exist uh, in a vacuum. Everyone feels their effects and everyone uh, experiences them to some degree or another which makes it really, really hard to address changes. How do you, in a world where, uh, in a world where men are taught by their parents, sometimes even by their mothers, that they need to basically uh, always be the provider, uh, and, but then they're put into a, a socioeconomic environment where you cannot make a enough money as an individual person to be a provider? Hey, Vermin, it's wonderful to see you. I miss you too. I hope we get to hang out soon. We're having a complicated discussion about men and women and about socializing and sex, okay? That's a rough position to be in, to, to grow up with the assumption that you are supposed to be a provider, uh, to, to constantly be pressured in that way, and then for it to become a functional impossibility. And that can lead a lot of men to feeling, to to not just feeling, but also being isolated, to feeling like, uh, like, uh, you know, like, 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 like they can't, uh, have any chance at ever having a partner that they, so they don't even try. They just live solitary lives. They don't even try to connect. Um, and that can, by the way, like I said, that can be reinforced by women. How many women post things making fun of, you know, how broke their guy was? You don't see it very often, people making fun of, of, I mean, okay, that's not true. You do see it very often, but usually in different spaces. People making jokes about, ah, oh, he was too broke to pay for anything. Oh, he was, uh, you know, he has a shitty car or whatever. These are like 
they're common, they're frequent. And a lot of times it is women repeating these stereotypes. And so to a certain degree, there is truth that women do participate in the forwarding and in the uh, advancement of patriarchy. And there are other types of people. There are people who are collaborators. For example, uh, think of people like, I don't know, Donald Trump's trophy wife. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. A person who is more than happy to play the role of the perfect wife, the wife who wants, who believes women should stay in their place, the, the, the woman who supports all of the conservative viewpoints, the woman who thinks women shouldn't be in the workplace. Uh, uh, those types of women also exist. Now they're probably on the, you know, they're the extreme end. There's a lot of Christian women who believe things like that. There's a lot of Christian women in positions of power. We have a woman on the Supreme Court who holds a lot of beliefs about what is appropriate and inappropriate for women to do. However, however, in patriarchy and under toxic masculinity, Men are always passively, perpetually, well, passively and actively, but passively uh, the main characters, which means that men's issues, it is most important, in my opinion, for men's issues to be, uh, to be worked out among men. Not, and that's not to say in, to the exclusion of anything else. You can't. There is no such thing as an exclusion. Women feel the effects of patriarchy. Non-binary people all feel the effects of patriarchy. However, because patriarchy selects men as the main characters, even if it hurts them, the, the, the way that you break this system down has to be among men. It has to be. Let women be the main character and realize it's not fun either. That is not, that is not what I'm talking about. That's, that's not it at all. Being the main character is not, it, it's not a good thing. It's not something to be strived for and it's not something to do. What are you talking about? That's not what I'm talking about. The, the main character status is very fragile. No, no one actually gets to be the main character. In patriarchy, the only people who are the main character are the men on top. People have to realize that. Men have to realize that patriarchy, it promises them certain things. It tells them they're the main character, but they never actually are. Maybe I didn't do a good job, uh, maybe I didn't do a good job explaining that. But, uh, but, but let me try again. In a system, that is selling promises to men, that is predicated on men buying into those promises to break down the system, which is killing men and women and everyone else and statistically does more harm to women than it does to men by the nature of the way that it's structured. It is super important that men buy into the concept that it is the patriarchy that needs to be dis disassembled, not because women are telling them to, but because they are trapped in something they will never actually be the beneficiaries of. So it's like the American dream for men. It is exactly like the American dream, but for men. It is a illusion that is sold to you, a illusion that keeps the world in a heinous state. Patriarchy sells the idea that men will live good lives and they'll have many women on their arms, but it doesn't deliver on that. Only the absolute richest, only the most absolute powerful men ever get to live that fantasy. And it comes at the cost of every other man and every other woman in the society living a horrible existence. That is, that is the cost that everyone has to pay. And while I 100% agree that there are all kinds of things that we all can do to, to disassemble patriarchy. For example, women not treating men like shit because they don't have a lot of money is a really good, that's a good thing to do. That's a great thing. You should not do that. Don't make fun of men if they don't have a lot of money. Nobody has a lot of money. Most people are poor. That is a fucking terrible thing to do. Okay? While that is true, there are things that all of us can do. 
At the end of the day, because of the way that patriarchy is structured, men have to, they have to be the ones who are connecting with one another to be tearing this thing down because they are the ones who are, uh, who the system is designed and sold to, okay? And as you guys all know, I am not a big fan of talking about privilege discussions because I don't think that privilege is a very helpful medium for talking about individuals. It is important for men, individual men, to all take the time to introspect, to spend time actually thinking about the ways in which patriarchy hurts not only them, but the women that they care about. All genders need to come together. Yes, but don't, don't, I understand what you're saying. I understand where people are saying all genders need to come together, but be careful that you don't end up all lives mattering it, okay? Because the simple matter is that, guys, like, yes, a lot of men are very lonely. Yes, a lot of men are very, very, very lonely. And that is a terrible, terrible outcome. You know what else is an outcome of this system? The fact that most, that that a, like, like one out of every four women will experience sexual assault by the time that they're in college? Which is not a thing that men experience. And it is largely done by men. So we have to remember that, that while it is absolutely important that everyone does their part to take apart, uh, 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 to take apart, you know, patriarchy, to, to address patriarchy, I'm doing my part. I'm not a man. I am a, a non-binary, genderqueer weirdo who has never been accepted in male or female or spaces in that way, okay? I recognize that. I don't care about that. I am not, I am not in that, you know, in that slot. Uh, but I am here, and I am going and have, in the past, gotten flack just for talking about this subject in a way that men do not. Men do not get the same flack that women do when they talk about this subject. That is just simply, that is just simply true. So it is also important for men to recognize when femmes, when uh, women, when trans women are taking on a lot of work in addressing a, 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 a issue that affects them a lot as well. Okay? No one I already agree with in my Twitter space is going to give you shit. You would be surprised. You would be fucking surprised. But also, there's a lot of people who don't agree with me in my Twitter space. Guys, I mean, ha has our memory fallen so short? When I made these exact same arguments, when I made these exact same arguments uh, a, a, two years ago when I did the DSK, whenever that was, was it two years ago? Two years ago when I made the, uh, when I made the D D Scrub King video, which was this exact same conversation. I made this exact same argument. The argument being that yes, women have a part to play in, in patriarchy, but that patriarchy has to be resolved between the people that patriarchy has chosen. That it can only be dissolved if those people stop buying into patriarchy and stop buying into patriarchal norms. One of the things I was talking about with this thread is that I, I do think that Vosh's thread was really good. For the record, I don't think Vosh engaged in any of the things I'm talking about here. I think Vosh's thread was really good. In fact, the first thing that he said was to address people who uh, might take this argument to, to mean like an entitlement to sex. He directly addressed that. So I have to say, as far as, as far as Vosh goes, good job, bro. That's a good fucking tweet. But I've seen a lot of discourse on this, like a lot of discourse. I have seen a lot of, I have seen people fucking fighting um, back and forth and, and yelling at each other and insulting each other and all kinds of, 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 of shit. I've seen a lot of takes that are, uh, that are just not good. Vosh good? Yeah, I mean, look, everybody, some people have their, Vosh is a, is a person just like anybody else. You guys know I quite like Vosh. Did you see the women should shut up and listen tweet? Yes, unfortunately I did. Let me give you an example of one of these fucking tweets. Let me see if I can find this. I, I didn't actually save it, but I'll, I'll give an example of the tweet because I'm going to show you exactly what, I, what I'm talking about when I say that this is like stupid. Hold on. It's, um, do you have the tweet? If you have the tweet, somebody send me it. I didn't actually save that tweet in advance. Somebody give it to me. I know somebody has it here. This is the one. 
I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Women need to sit down, shut up, and listen about men's issues. If you're not open to hearing out the people most affected by an issue about their experience, you have no business speaking on it. Guys, this is fucking stupid. This is phenomenally fucking stupid. And I, it makes sense why it was deleted and why you got, why whoever made this tweet got clunked, okay? Because what a, what a stupid way of, uh, of interpreting things. And this is what I was talking about, by the way. Women, men are not the ones most affected by patriarchy. They aren't. Women are. Unless you want to disagree, unless we want to go all the way to the root and I want to argue with a literal conservative, if I want to go, uh, uh, if I, if I want to go all the way back and we want to say feminism isn't right and we are, I, I'm not having that argument. I believe that feminism, uh, that feminism brought to it the attention a bunch of very valid things about patriarchy. I think it's historically very documented. So I'm not arguing with feminism here. Let me explain this. Since apparently we're going to do, since apparently we're going to be doing a conversation around feminism. Do you guys know uh, how many, uh, how many female presidents of the United States has there been? Oh, how many, uh, how many female leaders have there ever been in the entire history of the world? Okay. How, uh, how, what, what are the stats for, for uh, CEOs? For the shakers and movers of the world. We're the stats for the richest people in the world. Yeah, this is not hard, okay? This is pretty, pretty simple, okay? Women are underrepresented mysteriously. They're mysteriously underrepresented in any position of power, in any position of influence, in any position of, of meaningful say in our current system. And that doesn't mean, by the way, that just getting more... Um, that's patriarchy, not toxic masculinity. They're the same thing. They're the same. Patriarchy and toxic masculinity are like this. They're like this. Toxic masculinity is because of patriarchy and acts through, and patriarchy acts through toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity is a worldview that states that women are to be subjugated and Patriarchy is the world that results from that worldview. They are two parts of the same thing. Uncle Gumbald says, as a bit of an aside, but this has been a theme on House of the Dragon. It's really interesting. It's about how a lot of powerful women are solely expected just to prepare the next male in line for the throne. Yes, queens throughout history, the few queens that existed were flukes. And everything in line was put in their way to stop them from becoming the queen. For a long time, there was no such thing as a, like a queen was just a wife. It was just a royal wife. Through most of history, in most of the globe, the every political decision was made only by men. men. Women were completely and utterly locked out of any hall of power. They were objects. They were treated as objects. No, nuts, I'm talking about the experience of, I'm talking about, you keep making this argument that men are the primary victims of toxic masculinity. And I don't think, I think that that indicates an unwillingness to address what toxic masculinity and what patriarchy does to women. Toxic masculinity is terrible to men. However, men have some shot. The, even the average man has some, gets some benefits from patriarchy, some benefits, quote unquote. I think they're illusory benefits, but they are nonetheless. For example, it is like, this is the one that I always bring up. It was only in 1970 that it became legal for women to have a bank account without their husband's consent. That's not that fucking long ago. Yes, it, it is a system that tortures everyone involved. It doesn't benefit anybody, except for the men who are on top.
and the men who are given access to the top because they performed their toxic masculinity well enough. But what it does do is it, in, it, is it locks women in a forever underclass. Men, every man may not be able to make it. In fact, most men will never be able to make it to a position of power. But they are at least told that they have some shot instead of being locked in a forever underclass. And men also can have the ability to put their heads down and avoid most of the, the worst outcomes of toxic masculinity, which women do not have that ability. Women are constantly subjected to toxic masculinity. Constantly. If you engage in public at all, you are going to be the target of it. Constantly. Elac Kaval, how does toxic masculinity affect trans men? Well, it's it's part of what it's part of what makes people it, it's part of what makes a lot of men not accept trans men as men, because trans men uh, are not always are are more likely to be to not live up to the standards of sta of toxic masculinity, and so what that means is that it provides a a a gigantic wedge for for them to deny the man the manhood of trans men. Which is fucking crazy and terrible. Capo says, if I could extend an olive branch to nuts, I think they may be intending to say is that men are more directly harmed as, as individuals by the expectations and pressures of toxic man masculinity, which is arguably true. Women are much more harmed by the indirect societal and systemic effects of toxic masculinity. I still don't agree with that, but if that's what you want to tell yourself, then that's fine. But, uh... Toxic masculinity and patriarchy has resulted in literally uh, women not having the vote around the world. Women not having even the basic vote. Women literally not being given legal personhood. It's it, patriarchy and toxic masculinity is what leads to our society making it, uh, making uh, most health coverages, including public health coverages, cover men's health, but not cover women's health. Reproductive health is just ignored, which is, by the way, another way in which it affects trans men. Trans men need act uh, need access to reproductive health, but th but their type of reproductive health is for women, and therefore, as men, they shouldn't have to have that sort of issue. Which is another way that, that toxic masculinity and patriarchy harms trans men. Yeah, women were literally considered the property of men. And a lot of men still behave like that. And a lot of law laws still back up women on that front. And that's not to say that every individual man is doing better than every individual woman. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that the structure is, the, the purpose of the structure is to put men on top and women on bottom. And there's a reason why there's people who are invested in keeping men on the top. That's the p patriarchy is about pushing people under, and it's women who get pushed under. I mean, guys, like, <laughs> it wasn't often that men were executed for being fucking witches. Women were. And that still happens to this day, by the way. Men get, men do all kinds of shit and, and, and never have any repercussions for it. Tons of, tons of, like, like, look at the difference in a sexual abuse scandal in the way that people react to, say, like, somebody like Amaranth. And the way that they react to... The way that people react to Amaranth. Wait, is anyone saying men don't suffer? No one has said that. Men suffer in a, in a unique psychological and sociological way from patriarchy, but is anyone saying these are comparable, like it's a scale? No. The... I just don't, I just disagree with framing the question at all as if patriarchy, a thing that is designed to keep men on top and women on bottom, is somehow worse for, worse for men than it is for women. I think that, that framing is a dishonest framing. Is this a topic or a stun lock? This is a long topic.
there is a whole there is a whole nightmare discourse around this. I don't think anyone has argued that. You're conflating patriarchy and toxic masculinity. They're deeply related. They're separate concepts. I, I understand that they're separate concepts, but the way that they work is, I don't know, I really, I really feel like this is a massive, hair, massive splitting of hairs and deliberately ignoring what I'm saying. I wanted to talk about this topic on stream before, but I refuse to give DGG content. They're not going to get any content. Merrick is. Let's see what Merrick has to say on this. It's like people turn off the part of their brain that understands systemic analysis off when men are involved. It's not about whose fault it is. Nobody's talking about whose fault it is. There's nothing about fault. This is almost the identical conversation that we had in the past. It's so frustrating. Nobody has been talking about fault at all. What we're talking about is how the structure is built and a structure in which you say that men are the main victims of toxic masculinity is, is reaffirming the worldview of men being the main characters. I don't think Vosh was doing this. I think you people are pro projecting your argument onto Vosh and Vosh does not agree with you. Intentions Nasty says marital rape was legal in my country until 2009. Pansabi says only two states have actually closed the marital exemption for rape loophole legally. That's the marital rape loophole. That doesn't affect, that's not targeted at men. That's targeted at keeping all women. It's not about fucking fault. It's about honestly analyzing who is more affected by something. I'm sorry, but the idea that white people are having, if I was to come on here and say, and I know this isn't the exact same one-to-one -one issue, but if I was to go on here and say, actually white people are really the ones who suffer the most from racism, that would be ridiculous. You would, you would rightfully say that's ridiculous. A lot of times what happens in, in this conversation is this, which is that I start a conversation openly, uh, expressing what happens is that every single person on the internet is going to claim that the position I'm making uh, is is that women have the the harder part and it's men's fault. And that, by the way, that has a people lying about my position has a worse has a worse outcome than other people uh, being having their positions dishon dishonestly represented. Because if I'm doing it, I'm just another woman proving all of the misogynists right and the existing power structures that punish women who speak out will target somebody like me and they won't target somebody else. At the end of the day, let's move off, let's move off this, this, let's move off this topic for just a second, okay? Let's move off this topic for just a second. Men's loneliness is a super, super fucking important issue. Anyone's loneliness is an important fucking issue. I talk about how lonely old people are on this show all the time, an issue that most people never talk about. And I talk about that because even if it only affects a certain group of people, it's an important fucking issue. Men's loneliness is tied up in a whole bunch of socioeconomic and sociological factors. And framing and pointing that at women is as useless as as just blanket ignoring uh, the problems that men have. But men also need to recognize that their issues aren't versus women. A lot of these issues are versus men and versus the structures that were built to benefit men. And that everyone who is excluded from that conversation, which is everyone who's not a man, can only uh, look in horror from the outside and do their best to not get destroyed by it. Hundreds of thousands of people posting about how men are trash is bad and alienating. Correct! Correct, Pansabi. It is bad. And just so you guys know, just so that we're clear on this, uh, just for a second, um, uh, hundreds of, Pansabi says, hundreds of thousands of people posting about how men are trash is bad and alienating. I agree. 
And guess what? That's why I don't I don't do a whole lot of of ironic misandry. Very I, I mean fuck, you guys know like how many how frequently do I engage in ironic misandry? I have never engaged uh, in in like kill all men rhetoric, I've literally pushed actively against that. At least for me, perfectly. I mean, for me personally, I know very, very. I know some people who engage in that type of rhetoric, and I don't think it's a good answer. But also, once again, I really, 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 really don't think that uh, that people saying men are trash or whatever on Twitter.com is the same scope. What was I even saying? It's cultural values which we must push back on. Yes, misandry is bad. You're not fixing anything by engage by saying all men are trash. But at the same time, people on Twitter saying all men is trash should not be equated to anything else. It's a bad thing. It's a bad thing to do. In viewing it in terms of scopes or scales is self-defeating when this issue is universal and systemic. I agree. But I also, I agree with you, Windleby. I agree that in ge that generally we shouldn't talk about it. But I think that if people are going to make the argument that X group is most affected or whatever, that they should be able to back that up. And I do think that I agree with the core, uh, the core arguments of, the, of, of, of feminism as a whole, which is that women have been placed, uh, feminine people have been placed in, an, in a currently, uh, Set almost eternal underclass and that that is a different experience from being someone who is allowed access to the overclass it's i'm sorry it's fucking ugly you guys you guys want to go read about like the lives the lives the entire the lives that women have lived throughout history uh being denied personhood being treated like a a, a desk that you can ship from one side of the country to another that you can order around uh, where it's legally enforced that you can beat your wife so long as you use a stick that's the right size. Like legally, like your husband could just beat you, your father or brother could just beat you and they, there was nothing you could do about that for most of the history of the United States. It's a fucking ugly issue and it's always gonna be issue. Yeah, the rule of thumb. So let's talk about another thing, okay? We ended up having the argument that I expected was going to happen in this, uh, in this, uh, in this conversation. Uh, you know, I expected that we would end up getting this sort of this sort of thing, where it would become a distraction about what's really being talked about and whatever. But I want to talk about another thing, which is I want to talk about the issue of like uh, of of men's loneliness. And I want to talk about this idea that like lefties are hostile to conversations about men because I don't actually find that to be true. Um, I do think there are some progressives who are really, really bad about men's issues. But in truth, I find lefty spaces to be way more accepting of men talking about men's issues provided, provided that people are willing to pass, uh, to give up the idea that like, it, that there's like a contest or that it's men versus women because the problem that happens a lot of times is even in progressive spaces this happens uh, 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 you know this happens um, and and let's talk about let's talk about this 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 uh We, we live in a society where men are expected to work all the time, and we already know, now everyone's expected to work all the time, but specifically, men are supposed to be the providers. In, even, even in the modern era, men are told that they're supposed to be the providers. And uh, men are driven into a position where they have to spend all their time working at their career, which intrinsically makes them lonelier people. Working on your career is a fruitless endeavor. And uh, women don't seem to have the exact same problem to the same degree, partially because as a result of patriarchy, women have developed ways of socializing that are outside of the norm. Does that make sense? 
women are cut out of the approved world. They're not supposed, they're still frowned upon for being workers, even though most women work these days. They're still frowned upon for pursuing their career, even though most women have careers these days. But they, because they were, ne because for hundreds of years, women were not allowed to participate in the standard structures of socializing. Women have structures that are outside of, I have money, respect me. I'm the big man, come to me. Women have built connections out of a need to survive. And, and even, and, and while that's not, like, I'm not saying that every single woman participates in this or every single woman has that because a lot of women don't have that. It's just, it's more likely to happen because women are likely to know other women and those women are likely to know older women who have already been living through this shit for their entire lives. They've already spent their lives uh, getting, har getting harassed in the workplace, getting driven out of the workplace, getting uh, squeezed out of the workplace. Men need to develop alternatives. And we can help in that. Believe it or not, this is an area where every person, not just men, can deeply assist with this, which is we can provide places for men to hang out and be themselves. Where men can, can make friends that don't have anything to do with just your career, with just advancing your career, that don't have anything to do with scoring all the women and, and, and boasting how many women you, you fucked and all of that. You can build and help the men who do step away from patriarchy, who do step away from toxic masculinity, to build healthier and, uh, and, and more uh, uh, robust and powerful connections. Because I can tell you that uh, it's not just, it's not a modern issue that men are unsatisfied with the life that, ma that the patriarchy has laid out for them that they are unsatisfied with the life that patriarchal capitalism has laid out for them. You guys, you guys, have you ever heard of a, of a, of a play called Death of a Salesman? Death of a Salesman is one of the most famous and, uh, uh, and notably famous for devastating men when it came out because it was a story about a man who wastes his entire life pursuing a career and being cruel to his son only to end up unhappy as can be. This is a this is a story that is pre that predates our time. We know that this path isn't uh, satisfactory, and the answer isn't in uh, bringing more women onto that path. Although women might need to get into that path in order to survive, that's just a fact. If you live in capitalism, lots of women have to have careers now because they even if they're discriminated against, they just have to tank the discrimination because. Every, because you can't, how the fuck are you going to pay the bills? But what I'm trying to say is this, that the, the patriarchal capitalist view is an empty world that leaves people unsatisfied. And it's going to require all of us, including the men who are currently encapsulated in patriarchy, recognizing that this structure is not satisfactory. Even the fulfilled version of this is not a satisfactory path. Of course we need all hands on deck. And we get there by acknowledging that patriarchy has done what it has done, that patriarchy does not deliver on any of its promises, that its promises, keep in mind that it's not just that it doesn't deliver on its promises, but also that the, its promises are inherently bad. We need to, we need everyone, and men who currently participate in or are a part of or are doubting or whatever connected to patriarchy men need to acknowledge that the promise is an abhorrent promise a world in which men rule and all men when when that men are put on top and all women are put on bottom is is an abhorrent world and guess what just to address the elephant in the room it's okay if you're a dude and you like do like the idea of dominating women, that's okay. In fact, that's really cool. And some people find that super hot. But that shouldn't be the way the world is structured.
That's not the way that society should be structured. If you and a girl hook up and make that happen, that's fucking poggers for you. That's fucking amazing, and it might be the hottest shit in the world. Maybe you'll even get a whole group of people, a bunch of wives. Maybe you'll have 18 wives, and all of them are super into the fact that you're the patriarch of the house. That's pog for you. But don't you fucking dare extrapolate that out. And you have to acknowledge, everyone has to acknowledge uh, everyone has to acknowledge the fact that these promises are abhorrent, that it doesn't deliver on those promises anyway, and that it, the cost is the absolute destruction of, of the psyche of anyone, but specifically those who furthest stray from the ideals of patriarchy. Keep that in mind. Lo almost no one lives up to the ideals of toxic masculinity and the ideals of patriarchy. Almost no men do. But the further you stray, the more you stick out. And women, femmes, and queer femmes stick out the most. So please recognize that those people are being crushed and their psyches are being ruined alongside yours in different ways than yours might be.